I have been asking you to comment under my videos and give me ideas for what kind of videos you want to see in the future. And thanks to your comments, this week's video is going to be about deep diving into a bug bounty program. If you have more ideas for what kind of content you want to see on this channel, it's not too late. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you want to see in the future. And if you were one of the people that requested the deep dive, thank you so much and shout outs to you. As I mentioned, this video is about doing a deep dive into a bug bounty program. I didn't have a target for this one and I went through all my bug bounty programs that I've been participating in. And I realized Airbnb is probably one of my favorite programs that I hacked on a lot back in the day and also a public program that I can talk about. So for this week's video, the target is Airbnb. I'm gonna quickly walk you through how I would test Airbnb's bug bounty program. But if you want to see another target, do me a favor, drop it down in the comments. Let me know what should be our next target if and when I do a deep dive video in the future. Unfortunately, one of the things that I see a lot of times for people that come to me and they're like, hey, look at my hacking, this is what I do, can you give me some feedback? A lot of times for some reason, I see that people don't even bother to create an account, let alone populate data on that account to unlock a lot of the different features available on the website. So in this case of Airbnb, if we click right here on the right, this is what the menu looks like. Obviously, this is different than you probably would see as a brand new account because I have done a lot of work on this account. I have booked stuff, I've created my own listing, I've interacted with my other accounts and so on. So it's opened up a lot of different functionality. But if you're only a guest user, this is the default user when you sign up and you can only book a room or a property on Airbnb, you're not going to have access to the remainder of this. We'll talk about how to unlock those later, but you're gonna have access to things like messages, notifications, trips, and wish lists. All of these different areas are places for you to test for vulnerabilities like XSS, IDOR, CSRF, and so on. So for example, if you look at messages, if you have already booked something, I highly recommend creating two accounts, one being your hosting account that allows you to create your own listing. And then your second one being a testing account where you are the guest that you book your listing on that one and interacting with them. But in this case, you can see that on April, 2016, I had a listing that I had signed up for and Ben was the host or the guest. I don't remember which one is which. And then this one is the other user and we're interacting back and forth. Obviously some of these have been uh, deleted because that account was banned for some god awful reason. I'm not sure why, maybe something with the hacking that I've done, but you can see that I was interacting back and forth and trying to see what it looked like. So things that I would test in this case for a message system is looking at seeing if I can access other people's messages. Can I send a message to a user that I don't, that I shouldn't be interacting with, that I don't have a booking with? Could I access and read other people's messages? or even just deleting, editing, modifying, and so on. So if I type in hi right here and hit send, let's look at what this looks like really quickly. We're gonna to go to our network, press send, and we can see that there is a get thread that is sending or receiving this information. And if we go all the way down here, we can see this is what it was sent. All of these should be areas for us to test. So if you see an integer number or some sort of an ID that's assigned to a message or a user, those are our places to look for IDOR. But testing for IDOR also simply comes by testing the website and understanding how it assigns these IDs to different objects and how they structure it for you to test them out. So I don't expect you to jump in right away and be able to say this ID right here is what I need to change in order to uh, see a message, but if you look, the ID matches with the thread ID with the address right here. These numbers should be the same, ending in 269, and of course, ending in 269, ending in 269, which indicates probably if we change this number, if it is vulnerable, it's going to give us access to another user's messages. So just as an example, it's not a deep dive. The deep dive starts when you start your hosting account and create a listing that's safe to test within your test account and you start interacting with each other. Unfortunately, I do understand that creating a hosting account on Airbnb is extremely difficult, it takes a lot of effort, but it is something that is absolutely worth the effort because it is going to unlock the access to the entire hosting dashboard where you can start testing a lot of different functionality. So the expectation here is for you to not only test the given user access, but something I've really noticed with a lot of hackers is that nobody wants to put in the initial work to extend their access. People usually just test the surface areas by just doing the simple work of injecting payloads, maybe just creating wish lists and doing messages, but nobody wants to spend a little bit of money or go the extra work of getting ID verified to open up access to dashboards like this one that we can see that opens up a lot of different things like the calendar. And obviously all of these calendar objects are going to have 
different network, all these different functionalities are going to have different calls within them to get opportunities, for example, get messages, get the raid plans. All these different API calls are going to be additional space that you could test for, but unfortunately, you will lose that access if you do not create a host account. So I want to stress this out. I know I rambled a lot about the host account is with Airbnb specifically. I know as a fact, a lot of the testers that have not found a valid vulnerability on this program is because they stopped at being a guest. Nobody wants to do the ID verification, provide the documentation needed to become a host because that's too much work. And that's what separates you from doing a deep dive into the program than somebody who's not willing to go the extra mile. So it is obviously worth doing this because it gives you functionality, but there's also other aspects of Airbnb that we can take a look at. For example, I know down here somewhere you can also create experiences. So this is a hard one that even I haven't figured out how to submit my experience to, but it takes a lot of work to get into it. But these are just an example of things that you can do in order to get access to areas that haven't been unlocked by another user. Now let's take a look at a couple more examples. So far we have looked at becoming a guest, becoming a host, which takes a little bit of effort in order to become a host, but also there is this company dashboard. This is another area that you can explore within Airbnb that requires you to have your own domain. So if you have something like a Google apps, rest in peace of Google domains, but if you have something like Google apps, you can register your domain, use Gmail, for example, to create a Gmail account associated with that domain. Let's say hackwithnohomtech.com. You can register that as a company on Airbnb, which also creates this entire new dashboard that you can see on the screen that you are able to interact with. So here you can have your booking alerts, you can have different people. And within each of these people that you invite, they all have different permissions. So for example, right here, you can see there is different testing roles. You have your traveler, you have your trip planner, and you have your admins. Within these three, you have three different levels of authorization issues that you can check. For example, you can see if your travel account can access admin functionality, can you add new users, can you elevate your traveler to an admin, and so on. So this is another area that requires a tiny bit of setup, but at the end of it, it allows you to extend your attack surface and find different areas to test for that more than likely most people haven't looked at. Those are just the three different areas just on Airbnb that are huge to test. I haven't tested Airbnb for over three years, but from what I can see, they have developed a bunch of new functionality over the last few years and all those different areas that I've seen has extended more and more with new functionality and new API calls. So when it comes down to doing a deep dive, it's not just going into testing every single functionality, but it's also thinking of ways you can extend what you have access to. The prime example of that with Airbnb alone was to just become a host, become a company, and also become a guest. With the three of those, have three different methodology of testing with the similar vulnerabilities like XSS, IDOR, CSRF that you can look for, but also each of those could open up more and more different functionalities, different access levels, and vulnerabilities that you can look for. This is a really good intro to understanding what is a deep dive, but please do me a favor if you are testing functionality like becoming a host, becoming a company, do it responsibly, make different accounts. Maybe for example, you can make your host account and only do hosting tests on there. So you're not actually spamming actual rooms and actual people that are making money from Airbnb. You don't want to do that. That's going to cause a lot of work and you may just get banned from the Airbnb program. So do me a favor, create different accounts, go the extra steps. And also, but also it is a great investment to spend a little bit of money to unlock more functionalities that are behind the paywall. One of my most paid bounties on Airbnb was because I was a host on this website and I had generated income that opened up an entire functionality than anybody else because it included documentation for tax purposes. And I wouldn't have not unlocked that if I hadn't purchased my own hosting with my test account a bunch of times. I just want to give you an idea to understand how do you unlock functionality that other users don't have access to by just interacting between the two different accounts that you are controlling. If you find a locked area on the website, go to the documentation, read the documentation, and understand what are the steps necessary in order to be qualified to open up that particular functionality? Because a lot of times, a lot of the hackers don't go down that route. A deep dive isn't always about doing recon, finding more subdomains and doing asset discovery and monitoring and that kind of stuff. It could just purely be 
using this website, getting familiar with it. And if you want to go a step further, finding out where are all these calls written in JavaScript, maybe monitor those JavaScript files. So when a new functionality is created, you get alerted for you to test it out right away. I have done a bunch of cool write-ups on Airbnb with Brett Brewerhouse. I'll link him down below. I think a lot of this functionality has gone away from a RESTful API to a GraphQL based queries now it's not the same but it gives you the kind of where the vulnerabilities were how we look for them and also you will recognize a pattern of mistakes that we have identified on airbnb that you can probably take advantage of to look for more vulnerabilities that's it let me know what you think about this video i know it's really quick i know it's a lot to pack in a short 10 minute video i do my best to keep these videos between 10 to 15 minutes while highlighting everything that you need to know so it makes it really really hard to keep the videos short but also informative that you can take away some stuff from it so drop me a comment let me know what you think of this do you want more content like this and most importantly if i did another deep dive video what bug bounty program should i pick all right that's it i'll see you all in next week's video peace